Hi, I am Simi Pasha and you are watching Good News Today, our special series where we bring you positive stories of hope and courage. Our focus this week is on Nobel Prize winners whose stories have touched the lives of millions worldwide. This year's Nobel Prize ceremony was special, not just because an Indian was being awarded the prestigious Nobel Peace Prize, but also because he was sharing this honor with an activist from across the border. Indian child rights activist Kaila Satyarthi shared the honor with Pakistan's Malala Yousafzai, who stood up against the Taliban to fight for women's education. The award is also significant because it shows that even though our governments may not be able to see eye to eye on several key issues, we as a people cherish the same values. Here are the highlights of the ceremony. Satyarthi and Yousaf Sai are precisely the people whom Alfred Nobel in his will calls champions of peace. I call upon Kailash Satyarthi to come forward to receive the gold medal and the diploma. I am representing here the sound of silence, the cry of innocence, and the face of invisibility. I represent millions of those children who are left behind, and that's why I have kept an empty chair as to remind us, as a reminder. I have come here only to share the voices and dreams of our children. Because they are all our children. Twenty years ago, in the foothills of the Himalayas, I met a small, skinny child laborer. He asked me, is the world so poor that it cannot give me a toy and a book instead of forcing me to take a gun or a tool? I met a Sudanese child soldier. He was kidnapped by an extremist militia. As his first lesson, he was forced to kill his friends and family. He asked me, what is my fault? Twelve years ago, a child mother from the streets of Colombia trafficked enslaved, raped, asked me this. I have never had a dream. Can my child have one? Friends, all the great religions teach us to care for our children. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to them. Holy Quran says, kill not your children because of poverty. Friends, there is no greater violence than to deny the dreams of our children. Therefore, I refuse to accept that all the temples and mosques and churches and prayer houses have no place for the dreams of our children. I refuse to accept that the world is so poor 
when just one week of military expenditure can bring all the children to classrooms. I refuse to accept that all the laws and constitutions and police and judges are unable to protect our children. I refuse to accept that the shackles of slavery can ever be more stronger than the quest for freedom. I refuse to accept here. And now, I call upon Malala Yousafzai to come forward to receive the gold medal and the diploma. Please come forward. receive this award together with Kailash Satyarthi, who has been a champion for children's rights for a long time, twice as long, in fact, than I have been alive. I'm proud that we can work together. We can work together and show the world that an Indian and a Pakistani they can work together and achieve their goals of children's rights. I have brought with me some of my sisters from Pakistan, from Nigeria, and from Syria who share this story. My brave sisters, Shazia and Kainat, who were also shot that day on our school bus, but they have not stopped learning. And my brave sister, Kainat Somro, who went through severe abuse and extreme violence. Even her brother was killed, but she did not succumb. Also, my sisters here, whom I have met during my Malala Fund campaign. My 16-year-old courageous sister, Mozoon, from Syria, who now lives in Jordan as a refugee. And she goes from tent to tent, encouraging girls and boys to learn. And my sister, Amina, from the north of Nigeria, where Boko Haram threatens and stops girls, and even kidnaps girls, just for wanting to go to school. Though I appear as one girl, Though I appear as one girl, one person who is five foot, two inches tall, if you include my high heels, it means I'm five foot only. <laughs> I am not a lone voice. I'm not a lone voice. I am many. I am Malala, but I'm also Shazia. I'm Kainat, I'm Kainat Somro, I'm Mozun, I am Amina. I am those 66 million girls who are deprived of education. And today, I'm not raising my voice. It is the voice of those 66 million girls.
just going to focus on Nobel Prize winners from the subcontinent. There were several others who were awarded for their contribution in the field of science, literature and economics. Take a look. Nobel for Literature went to Francis Patrick Modiano for the art of memory, a work in which he has evoked ungraspable human destinies and uncovered the life world of the occupation. Japanese scientist Isamu Akasaki and Hiroshi Amano and Japanese-born American Shuji Nakamura got the Nobel in physics this year for the invention of efficient blue light emitting diodes which has enabled bright and energy saving white light sources. A breakthrough that has spurred the development of LED technology to light up homes, computer screens and smartphones worldwide. The importance of uh, this prize is that because uh, uh, through this uh, uh, prize, uh, general people uh, could understand the importance of the high efficient blue and white LEDs in order to save uh, energies, especially to solve the global warming issues. So that's the most important thing because general people have to notice the importance of uh, this uh, technology. In the category of chemistry, Americans Eric Bedzig and William Morena and German scientist Stefan Hell were jointly awarded this year's Nobel for the development of super resolved fluorescence microscopy, a new method that lets microscopes see finer details than they could ever see before. There is a combination of both aspects, the fundamental uh, discovery uh, without really knowing what the applications might be, and then a later really exciting applications that appeared. Nobel for Physiology or Medicine this year was divided. One half awarded to U.S. British scientist John O'Keefe, the other half jointly to Norwegian husband and wife duo Edvard and May Britt Moser for their discoveries of cells that constitute a positioning system in the brain. Revelations that could well lead to advances in diagnosing Alzheimer's. It's very nice to share it with her. Uh, we, all the work is uh, a joint effort from our side. So we have been working together as a team. We are complementary, so we sort of fill in each other. And uh, I think the, the product, the result of our work is more than uh, if just one, it's more than the sum of the contributions from the two. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic for the team. Cuts through any stone. Frenchman Jean Tirole has been awarded Nobel for economics for his analysis of market power and regulation, which shows how regulators can manage markets dominated by a few powerful companies to keep them from blocking competition and overcharging customers. We here at Headlines today believe in getting you ground reports on news events from across the globe. Our deputy editor Smita Sharma traveled to Oslo to get us a glimpse of celebrations in the Norwegian capital. She also spoke exclusively to Kailash Satyarthi and Malala Yousafzai. Take a look. The world watched as Kailash Satyarthi from India received the Nobel Peace Prize for 2014 along with Malala Yousafzai of Pakistan. And I'm joined here by the newsmaker of the year, Mr. Satyarthi himself. Mr. Satyarthi, first and foremost, many congratulations. India, of course, is proud of your achievement. Thank you so much. And thanks to all my fellow brothers and sisters in my motherland. I'm so proud to be an Indian. You know, yes, at the Nobel Peace, uh, at the ceremony, at the grand ceremony, really, what was going on in your mind, in your heart, when you were finally receiving the award? Did it take a bit to sink in uh, what was the feeling really all about when you stood on that podium to deliver that lecture? I was definitely thinking of millions of those children who are deprived from their childhood and that's why I kept a chair empty as the remember of these children. So that was very clear in my mind. But I was feeling very proud that I am born in a country where we have so much rich culture. 
things, non-violence, compassion. Uh, there was also that little incident where before you spoke and Ustad Amjad Ali Khan was about to perform, a boy came into the stage running with a Mexican flag. Uh, could you get a sense of what really was the boy's message to the Nobel laureates? Uh, yesterday I could not get a sense, frank, frankly speaking, but today everybody is talking about that boy. And it's about that some children have been killed or kidnapped, young people, not the children, in Mexico. And uh, perhaps he wanted to raise the voice on this issue. So do you think with this Nobel Peace Prize then, you know, that your responsibilities increase much more, that you will also be expected by not just Indians and India, but by other countries too, to raise these issues, maybe, you know, in different capacities, right to governments? you think the governments will respond to you more warmly? Uh, well, to respond to the first part of your question, uh, let me tell you that I have been working in more than 100 countries for almost two decades. And I have been the founder and chair of two most important organizations or networks in the world, and the biggest, the largest one, one on education and one is on child labor. So I am the founding president of Global Campaign for Education, which works in 180 countries. And I am the founding president of uh, uh, Global March Against Child Labor, which works in more than 140 countries. So uh, my travel, my demand, my engagements were already there in so many countries. But now, during the last two months, uh, I got more than 8,000 invitations from India and from elsewhere in the world. Because the best part of it was that very ordinary workers who had never been in limelight, they always remain unacknowledged or unnoticed. They, within no time, they connected themselves with me. Right. And that was the, the most moving part of it. They, they feel so much proud. They, they felt so much, uh, you know, um, empowered. Um, and uh, tremendous amount of hope came to them. Tremendous. Uh, and that was so spontaneous. I, I started receiving those mails and tweeters uh, from all such people. Uh, and um, then I felt very proud that it is always good to be a very ordinary social worker so that many people can feel connected. So post the award, does life still continue in the same way or the Nobel Peace Prize really changes life for you now further? I don't think that it will change. The only thing is that, for instance, you can see here, I cannot talk to the media. People like you are waiting uh, for a couple of days and others are also waiting. My own Indian uh, friends in media, they had to wait because of the security arrangements and so much protocols and so on. Um, I, I heard that such kind of protocols are also observed in other countries with the Nobel Peace Laureates. Um, but uh, I will make sure that I must remain connected with my people in my country and with my people all over the world. The youngest recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, Nobel Laureate Malala Yousafzai is here with me. Malala, what does the Nobel Peace Prize really signify to you? How does it change your mission ahead? Uh, I'm really honored that I have received this prize together with Kailash Satyarthi and it's a great honor. It's, an, it's a prize for peace. It encourages those people who are fighting for children's rights, for women's rights, for human rights. And this award is not just for me. It is for those children who are deprived of education and especially for those girls who have no access to education, whose talents are not respected, who do not get equal opportunities mm -hmm. in society. So I'm hoping that this will encourage more girls to come forward and speak up for their rights. And this is totally to raise the voices of children. And do you think regarding Regardless of how the diplomatic relations are between New Delhi and Islamabad, you can still continue to work with somebody like a Kailash Satyarthi on social challenges which are common to both countries? Well, Kailash Satyarthi, he's a wonderful person and he has been doing a great work for, for decades and it would be a great opportunity to work together with him and the work he does really inspires us. So um, I'm really grateful that we have received this award together. It itself is a big honor. And about India and Pakistan, I'm hoping to see good relationships. This is how both the countries are going to develop and see progress. एक आखिरी सवाल उर्दू में हमारे दर्शकों के लिए जो बच्चे हैं जो आपको देख रहे हैं उनको आप क्या संदेशा देना चाहेंगे? 
تو بچوں کے لیے یہی پیغام ہے کہ آپ اپنے حق کے لیے خود آواز اٹھائے کسی اور کا انتظار نہ کریں اگر آپ انتظار کریں گے تو ہو سکتا ہے کوئی آپ کے لیے نہ بولے اس لیے ضروری ہے کہ آپ خود آگے بڑھے اپنے حق کی بات کریں تعلیم کی بات کریں اور ان مسائل کے خلاف بات کریں جن سے جو آپ کو درپیش ہے جیسے کہ چائلڈ لیبر ہو گیا چائلڈ ٹریفکنگ ہو گیا تو آپ آگے آئے اور تعلیم کے لیے بات کریں نوبیل لوریٹ نوبیل شانتی دوت ملالا یوسف زئی سمان پانے کے بعد سب سے پہلے کسی ایک بھارتی اچانک کے ساتھ مخاطب ہوتے ہوئے سدھارت صفائی کے ساتھ سمیتا شرما اوسلو فور آج تک اینڈ ہیڈ لائنس ٹوڈے تھینک یو سو مچ ملالا ٹو شیئر دا وائسز اینڈ ڈریمس آف اور چلڈرن بیکاز دے آر آل اور چلڈرن ٹوینٹی ایئرس اگو ان دا فوٹ ہلس آف دا ہمالیاز I met a small skinny child laborer. He asked me, is the world so poor that it cannot give me a toy and a book instead of forcing me to take a gun or a tool? I met a Sudanese child soldier. He was kidnapped. Hi, I am Simi Pasha and you are watching Good News Today, our special series where we bring you positive stories of hope and courage. Our focus this week is on Nobel Prize winners whose stories have touched the lives of millions worldwide. This year's Nobel Prize ceremony was special, not just because an Indian was being awarded the prestigious Nobel Peace Prize, but also because he was sharing this honor with an activist from across the border. Indian child rights activist Kaila Satyarthi shared the honor with Pakistan's Malala Yousafzai who stood up against the Taliban to fight for women's education. The award is also significant because it shows that even though our governments may not be able to see eye to eye on several key issues, we as a people cherish the same values. Here are the highlights of the ceremony. <laughs> I am representing here the sound of silence, the cry of innocence and the face of invisibility. I represent millions of those children who are left behind and that's why I have kept an empty chair as to remind us, as a reminder. I've come here only. Satyarthi and Yusuf Sai are precisely the people whom Alfred Nobel in his will calls champions of peace. I call upon Kailar Satyarthi to come forward to receive the gold medal and the diploma. extremist militia. As his first lesson, he was forced to kill his friends and family. He asked me, what is my fault? Twelve years ago, a child mother from the streets of Colombia trafficked, enslaved, raped, asked me this, I have never had a dream. Can my child have one? Friends 